Thanks, Matt. Knock him dead, killer. Yeah. <laughs> How is everybody fucking doing? I'm doing all right. Really yeah. serious in here. Right. 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 Blowing water, man. First off, I want to say thank you to Steve. Good job, okay. Steve. <laughs> All right. 316. Love you, Steve. I am. Uh, Not like that. Not I'm gonna start with. Uh, I'm gonna start with a new poem tonight. This is. Um, this is a poem called the, the Night My Heart Through an Emo Dance Party. <laughs> Tonight I'd get I'd gladly get down on my knees and sing me bring me your ghetto blaster of love. I will build a shrine around its ignorance. A religion founded with the knowledge that whomever has never smelled like sex has the scent of death tattooed on their palm. That stillborn rose pruned and worshipped in the spring of our eternity. I think of the corpses in the road, the one-hit wonders searching for poetry who just ran out of holy water. I have run out of words for them. The ghost of outlaw angels who, like holy fools, bathed in wonder, dabbled in, this, in the absurdity of your perfection. Thinking about it now, those ideals are what created the 1950 Z-grade monster that I stayed up nights writing sonnets for to begin with. Thank you, Ted Berrigan. At least I have the church of Coca-Cola and riddles to hide inside Trojan horses. This is war on the hands and knees of true love. I've hidden the soul of Rivers Cuomo deep inside my loins to make my poems more attractive to the opposite sex. Take no prisoners? Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> All right, this will be easier to get to. That'll be good. All right, uh, this is a poem called uh, Uncle Sam's Cabin. There is a place as beautiful as our loneliness can make it. Where we like to go when it feels like rain. And all of our nation's leaders seem to be masturbating on the inside. Where we like to imagine that the sun has the most beautiful skin we've ever seen. As soft as infancy. And a shadow that is just too plain shy to make its presence known. Because it is easier than dancing alone to a global mambo of indecision. Easier than being told that we are making history feel dumb. That ours is a love story more ancient than the first kiss on the lips of infinity. And it is certainly easier than thinking we are the sum total of our country's charms. America, you were once beautiful on the inside too. Just close your eyes. And remember what that must have felt like. Remember the meaning behind our touch. We live on memories and call them dreams. Because let's be honest, sometimes it just feels better to be lied to than to face the fact that beauty in this day and age is truly skin deep. Do what I can. All right. Switch to something a little bit older. All right. Uh, this is a poem called The Muse Lottery. <laughs> I don't care if Bob Dylan eats rabbit stew, God mumbled. His lips trembling. He makes me feel like a failure. I want to be a pop icon, too. I want to fuck up hotel rooms on acid. I want to write love poems for my old lady that don't take six days to create. But all the muses in the world want to be his. 
I'm just some loser who got screwed in the Muse lottery. I can't even strum a guitar without heavenly choir singing odes of copyright infringement. <laughs> How long must I wear this t-shirt that says, I cleaned all the bathrooms in heaven and all I got was immortality? <laughs> Dylan got that too. And all he ever had to do was mumble. <laughs> Maybe he'll let me be his roadie if I tell him I'm just in it for the chicks. Yes! Maybe the vegan girls will dig me after I tell them I'm an environmentalist. I created the earth and Al Gore. <laughs> who I nominated for sainthood, but my vote was vetoed because I was seen drinking wine at a wedding with Howard Dean. And now everybody just seems to think I'm an extremist. Why won't the Chelsea Hotel hang my picture in the lobby? All I ever really wanted was for John Lennon to want to hold my hand. But Bob locked my divinity inside his guitar case and called me a square. Maybe I'll kiss his ass and see how far that gets me. If that doesn't work, maybe I'll just get Leonard Cohen to take him in a fist fight in the name of peace. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, we have a lot of problems in this fucking country. And this is a poem, this is a poem about like how our country's biggest problem is the fact that I can't dance. <laughs> this is uh, the politics of modern dance. <laughs> On the news, they are talking about war. Blah, blah, blah. I find it all very depressing. What the American people should damn, re damn well be worried about is me on a dance floor. Move over, Fred Astaire. I wasn't blessed with the gift of tap. When they blew up the World Trade Center, my feet were the bomb they never saw coming. They're going to send our boys to a land I've never seen and I can't two-step. I once told a poet, I once told a woman that great poets can't dance. And she just laughed, saying that I must be the greatest poet since Shakespeare. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't care. It's just that I might want to get married someday. And the thought of that first dance freaks me out more than any stray bullet that might hit everything but my feet. What the troops need is someone like John Travolta as a drill instructor. I can't imagine that George W. can dance any better than I can. And lately I've been thinking that all our problems can be boiled down to a simple lack of rhythm. So you won't catch me doing one last tango in Paris, Texas? My steps would be the shot heard around the world, louder than the screams from any fallen shuttle. So when everything passes, or until we experience the kind of end that Jim Morrison must have been talking about, I'll send a silent prayer to Mr. Bojangles, who must be rolling over in his grave with the knowledge that America can no longer get by on fancy footwork. Yeah. All right. This is a poem called uh, Small Miracles. I met this guy who believed that conception was his birthday. So he was always nine months older than everyone else he knew. <laughs> Said he could feel his father's father's penis bitch lapping his brain like a rubber chicken. <laughs> he worked as magician in Coney Island to buy dank blueberry nuggets and sold methadone to 12-year-old prostitutes in need of backstory. That was his daily alibi for not attending the second coming of Jesus. Wandering the earth like that cat on Kung Fu, and saying, I'm not God, but merely his stepson. And when he slept on our couch, he could make eight balls disappear. And like Grace Slick, he sang odes to white rabbits in the shower that were touching. And when he was told by the great spirit that he had nine months to live, he just laughed, feeling like he had already cheated death, saying that he couldn't conceive of a death worse than the one he had just lived through. He was his shadow's best kept secret, gambling with belief systems, 
walking on water every time it rained. He was God. It was in his blood, like holy water. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see here. I always kill my throat when I do it, but I love it. All right, this is for Casey. Because I love that son of a bitch, even if he wears that hat. <laughs> All right. This is um, a poem about a friend of mine who I used to live in Philadelphia for a long time, and he was shot dead for uh, literally a dime bag of pot. And I wrote this. I hustled these streets. I hustled these streets for words on behalf of dreams. Running my fingers through your hair, punching a clock, finding the hourglass. I hustled these streets searching for the ghost of Hassan Jones, the best of fellow I've ever seen. Gentle giant shot dead for a dime bag while the world slept cold. You were my friend because we knew we could change the world with a smile and a sonnet. I hand your spirit out to small girls and lockets on the side streets of the world where nobody ever thought to look. I hustled these streets thinking that home was right around the corner, which was silly, because I know we're not in Kansas anymore. We never were. All that was around that corner was the bar, so I stopped in for a drink. Red-faced joy is the best I've ever known but can never seem to remember. Home is no place, has no street address, only a gentle touch. I hustled these streets, 12th and Spruce. I carried you on my back from the cradle to the grave, thinking I'd found love. But it was a con. Never hustle a hustler. The heart was beating before I got here. I hustled these streets wanting to scream, but I held my tongue, knowing that you can catch more dreams with honey. Our reflection like a pavement, a cement blanket, strewn from an echo sleep, built to last, not fade away. These streets hustle me. All right. Couldn't do another one out of here. Actually, maybe a few more. This is, uh, I've spent a lot of time touring this country and a lot of that you either spend on floors, friends' couches, or hotels. So I wrote this poem. Uh, it's called I Like Hotels. I like hotels because you can read Hamlet under a Jesus nightlight. <laughs> screaming about betrayal while, s while eating powdered donuts, sipping black coffee listening to phantom sounds of Miles Davis on a busted turntable, or dreaming about mermaids dishing out soup in 1930s Oklahoma, smoldering under the very sun that would do in John Steinbeck, or fanciful thoughts of ruby slippers that never seemed to fit on a honeymoon in Modesto, touring the Boone's Farm winery, forgetting about wanting to stomp grapes with Mae West in Boneyard Alleys. You can forget about that. I like hotels because the dreams have vacancies. The kind that don't ask questions. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll do this. Shit, serious. What's that, man? <laughs> that last was a couple lines. Thank you, thank you. All right. This is, um, hmm, I'm going to do that. I'll do this. I can be louder when I do this. <laughs> this is a poem called The Night of Revelations. This is the night of revelations. The night Jim Dwyer saved poetry with words by turning water into scotch and scotch into water to save his own life. Just when that little voice in my head had thrown in the towel, one, two, three, four, stay down, motherfucker. Don't you know I'm the ghost of Sonny Liston? The night can't murder me. I'll just keep fighting. 
Shadow boxing the outlines of dreams. Because this is about life. This is about poetry. This is a night of revelations and I'm sitting in a bar in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I've never had these thoughts before. Mick Jagger was right. You, you really can't always get what you want, even in dreams. But at this moment, I have everything I need. And Nikki really is a nice person. And Mike swings words like an ax. And I, look, and I feel like a lumberjack extra on Miami Vice. Or Casper the Friendly Ghost. Maybe if I had a top hat, I could be poetry's Mr. Peanut. That has been my life's dream. Because life is all about the struggle to become visible. This is a night of revelations, and what I've realized is, I've yet to begin living. Poetry is waiting for a slow dance to Buddy Holly's bop. The revelations were secrets in a past life. Dreams may not pay the rent, but if you believe in them, you will never be homeless. Yeah! This is the night of revelations, and I'm sitting in this bar with a ringside seat, preaching to the choir, a ghost guarded by angels, screaming, one, two, three, four, stay down, motherfucker, can't you hear the bells? Do a few more, Steve. I'm not time conscious, so you know I just do what I do. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll wait to do that. All right. Um, hmm. Okay. I'll do this. Uh, this is a poem for Scott Wanberg, and I have had the privilege of reading with Scott um, many, many times. He's the author of a book called The Electric Yes Indeed. Uh, and if I can follow him, I can follow anybody. A, the man with a face like a horse. The man with a face like a horse said, they are trading love on Wall Street. That's why nobody has touched my prick in over a year. Though I've ceased to worry about grace. I can never walk on water while making love to words anyway. I can never whisper sweet nothings under the moonlight without thinking about how the sun was gift wrapping skin cancer under my tongue. It always seemed like a trick to take the words away. Enjoy life now, the moon sang. The moon had tits like Jane Mansfield and would never even have thought to touch any part of my being, let alone my soul. Cause I wasn't hung like James Brown. Could never sing like James Brown, that godfather of soul. I always wanted to take the words out on a date. But the girl of my dreams had a sharp tongue and a pussy that was resistant to my tongue's meager wisdom. I wanted to say to sparkling Jane, there are more of us than there are of you, baby. An ugly ghost saw you pick your nose before purging in the bathrooms of heaven. My ancestors did an Irish dance, spitting out their teeth in praise of the heavenly ugly people. I'm glad they're ugly people. Even people uglier than me with my horse face. Otherwise, how would the first ugly person have ever gotten laid? How would the first poem have ever been written? Real beauty is the dance on my tongue. True saints re remember what a nation of cameo poets always seem to forget. Hungry for their 15 minutes of virgin divinity. False grace. Held up to the light for all ages. Beauty was the first lie that God ever told himself. Well, for centuries, my thoughts of stolen hungry kisses from the mouth of the sun. Moments like these, I always try to remember that the password of, to the first speakeasy was a love song whose meaning is worth more than all the gold records hanging on the walls of heaven. I hate it when your eyes start to sweat, you can't really see anything. Alright. What's that? It only happens when I'm watching porn. Steve, your eyes are probably sweaty quite frequently. <laughs> With a beret like that, there's a lot of porn going on, isn't there? <laughs> All right, um, 
Uh, this is um, this is a poem that's just for fun, and I've read this for a long time. It's usually not fun for me because I've read it many, many times. But when a poem gets you laid, you stick with it. <laughs> this is uh, if I had cancer the balls. If I had cancer the balls, you might refer to me as a man's lady instead of a lady's man. For I'm not Charlton Heston raving and ranting about the size of my rifle. I don't need a chariot to move slowly, flaming balls. If I had cancer the balls, I'd shoot blanks into exhaustion on the beaches of Normandy. Every date, another war with sterility. If I had cancer the balls, I'd send countless whores on guilt trips for beer and candy cigarettes. And they would define my existence as the ultimate mercy fuck. If I had cancer the balls, I would sing praises to Bill Taylor, awarding him the Pushcart Prize for Charm. <laughs> if I had cancer the balls, I wouldn't ride a bicycle or wear clean underwear. If I had cancer the balls, I'd go slam dancing with Taylor Molly in search, in, in search of certain victory. If I had cancer the balls, I might then be considered lovable, and you might hug me, squeezing my balls together so that when I pissed, the drops left on the rug would spell out your name. All right, uh, I'm literally going to read like two more poems here. Literally. What's that? Am I early or what? Yeah. All right, well then I'll do, I'll do what I do. Do what you do. All these poems are too fucking serious. I don't know who wrote these. <laughs> Kornacki, it's serious time. Serious. I don't want to be serious, fuck that. <laughs> hey, who's the feature here? I'm here. Share with us, <laughs> I want to giggle like you. Sources poetry is making the girls giddy. I don't think I so. I I'm stealing them. Read the cancer of the ball. No. All right. Um, this is a short poem. I uh, I once I once dated a girl who felt the need to tell me that she had strong teeth. I don't know what that means, and some part of me doesn't want to know. But I wrote this poem. This is uh, on borrowed sunlight. We are living on borrowed sunlight for cult status, celebrity skin, used vinyl. Most days I feel like Leatherface revisiting the scene of the crime, going down on the American daydream. And we're spent on pussy juice, dripping from Venus's outline. Goddess of love, I lick your lips in search of lifesavers at the bottom of the ocean. Thank God I have strong teeth. <laughs> Find the poem I want. Here it is. Um, and for a lot of people know my background in poetry. Um, I was kind of like the I was kind of like the beat baby because uh, Gregory Corso was a family friend. Really? And I got started that way. Wow. Nice poem. Uh, but I wrote this. I wrote this poem for him. It's uh, it's called the King Midas of Pussy. It's for Gregory. Gregory would have stolen your watch as soon as look at you. He would fence poems and paintings to the sun to make Ra laugh. That's how he kept his spirits up. Most so-called revolutions come cheaper than some really than a really good joint. Or some Mexican tar, he used to say. His happy birthday of death came way too soon either way. Revolution or not. That cold feeling is ghost haunting Minnesota. Like a phantom pain scribing poems on the sky's canvas. That smile, that laugh, turning gold into pussy and pussy into gold. Painting the perfect image on his tongue. Going down on purity and light. He said his muse cried all night when Bird died. Those are the things you remember. 
Sometimes you have to you have to drown just to fuck a mermaid. So she'll leave a poem under your pillow. He told me once that in his sleep Shelley had a dream about him. That's why he always thought about carrying a gun. I'm going to finish this with some new poems because that's what I intended to do anyway. If I can find them. Alright, this is brand this is pretty brand new. This is uh blues for a nine millimeter ghost town. And it's about the city of Detroit. Uh which yeah, it's fucking horrible. But uh, on most days you will find them here. Detroit, land of the casual werewolf. They will sing you to sleep on Magic Avenue. They say drink dark milk. Wait for the commentary of shadows. Here, even the ghosts carry nine millimeters through streets of broken dreams. Tucked inside a book, your language has yet to be written down. You'll see, the sun doesn't shine here. God lost a coin toss and decided to build housing projects on the outskirts of heaven. The earth was handmade, a paradise of masturbation, where children tell stories in silence. Hungry, the dead send their street sweepers through to collect your dreams and gather in a circle before eating their young. I, and now, I think I literally am going to do two more poems. Too. But, uh... A little finger you. Literally? Yeah, well, I told him before, and then Steve told me to do whatever, so I'm going to do two or now. figuratively. I just said that! Don't copy Rerick. He's a bad... You know what? That's the one guy in the room you don't want to copy. Bad guys. Yes. And I'll tell you... It's always, We're all thankful for his copy. It's always better when a girl says it. All right. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. This is um, this is a poem called uh, "Solving the Murder of Captain America," um, and it's from my best friend S.A. Griffin, who, if some of you know, he co-edited a book called "The Outlaw Bible of American Poetry." Yeah, that's a good one. When they killed Captain America, it wasn't with any sort of kindness I can think of but to prove a point about where we place our values. The ghost sang, we can sell his bones to finance our war on terror. I know what you're thinking. Gee whiz, it worked with the Indians. <laughs> Sun in your eyes calling the muse a whore for singing a lullaby to the Union dead. There is little difference between a hero and a martyr anymore. Now, son, the president has prayed about it, just so you know not to protest. Don't worry. God said everything was totally cool. We have to throw a spitball in the face of all unholy wars, just so they know we're serious. Stand back. Be quiet. Don't raise your voice. Just remember why you're here. And I will, uh, I will end with this. Um, a couple of, a couple of months ago, uh, some kids at Columbine High School, there was, a, there was a bomb threat there, so they were told to go wait outside their school. And man, don't these kids get a fucking break? Everything seems to happen in Columbine High School. But after I heard about that, I wrote this. This is called um, "Bullets Over Broadway and Bombs Over Columbine." I thumb through the paper like most average Americans, just trying not to get blood on my hands. As children huddle up in some Colorado park, waiting to be let back into school. Newsprint opens flowers. Fields of blood lotus have started to spring up across the flatlands of Ohio and along the prairies of Lawrence, Kansas. I think about Japanese high schoolers at some ancient prom in Nagasaki. Could they smell death on the surface of their gymnasium floor? Did they think, am I dreaming? The ghost whose blood got in the punch bowl. 
They really knew how to slow dance in moments of crisis. Remember to whisper. They won't even let us read Auden, Auden's funeral blues because he was a little too queer. They come riding horses through the streets of Lincoln, Can Lincoln Nebraska. Fucking it up. Whispering random Patriot Acts named after Abby Hoffman. What is the meaning of all of this? Remember to keep your head down, the teachers say in their best underpaid voices of concern. American children whisper back. Hiroshima Mone More. They are the new antisocial samurai. Waiting in the embassy of suburban caves in prayer for an end to our consumer holocaust. To create an international language, they whisper peace. Like it's going out of style. All right, uh, again, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Carp. Thank you, Carmen, for reading as well. Thank you, Jake, for showing up. I'm just glad you're here. It's good to see you. I know you I know you came for Carmen, but there's tight ass name. Good job, John. That was fantastic. Wonderful job.